Good evening. Uh, today I'm not going to go into any religious <clears throat> aspects or anything. I'm actually going to want to talk about culture. Uh, primarily I'm going to focus on the Middle Eastern or more specifically the Arabs. <clears throat> I have noticed and also I've been asked this question numerous times. Why do we, why do the Arabs immigrate from the Middle East and go to other countries such as uh, <clears throat> countries in Europe the US, Australia, or anywhere else around the world. Um, however, once they get there, they cling on to these traditions that for some reason they just don't want to relinquish, even though they left their country in the first place due to certain reasons. So one thing to wonder is, why did they leave in the first place? Now, I was kind of curious. I, <clears throat> I did a little search online. I was just wanted to see from an Arab's perspective. I did a little search that said, why do Arabs leave their immigrate? And I was actually faced with something really interesting. Uh, someone had written this really nice poem uh, explaining why Arabs migrate or immigrate from the countries, however they still feel this longing. He kind of... Uh, <clears throat> He compared it to a bird leaving its nest. A bird having grown up in a tree. And however, for certain reasons, whether it be not enough food in the tree, or not enough sun getting to it, or better prospects in other trees, hence making the bird leave his nest and moving on to, a different, to different trees or to different areas. And I thought that was kind of interesting, because that's exactly what's going on with Arabs in the Middle East. There's a lot of reasons as to why people emigrate from their original countries and homelands. Uh, whether it be poverty, uh, whether it be the, the need to succeed. Uh, there's always the, the Western dream, the American dream <clears throat> um, <clears throat> of you know, wanting to enhance yourself, because but more than likely, Wherever you're born in the Middle East, even though we don't have specifically a caste system, if you're born in a certain class, you're going to stay there. There's not much, gonna, nothing much is going to change it. Very, very seldomly do you break out of where you are and move up. So there's always that prospect of enhancing yourself. There's always education. Um, <clears throat> actually, Arabs pride themselves on the fact that, oh, my son is studying in England. My daughter is studying in France. My cousin is studying in the U.S. Well, does the Middle East not have universities of its own? Sure it does. Are they, do they teach the same things? Sure. But will somebody benefit from going to those universities as much as going to a Western university? Uh, he might have the knowledge, but he's not going to have the world skills. As a matter of fact, somebody who is very well educated and well versed in a certain uh, field from a university in the Middle East will usually have to equate his or her degree once they come to the West in order to work there in that field. However, what I want to focus on today is not necessarily as to why they leave, but why cling on to these little traditions, something like this, that makes you, <clears throat> even though you've moved to the West, instead of assimilating completely, you're somehow stuck uh, back home. Now, if you ask any Arab, where is home? It doesn't matter if they've lived here for years and years and years and decades. They will still refer to their place of birth as their homeland. And honestly, I think that will be true for any person who has been, who's been born anywhere and migrated somewhere else. Uh, your homeland, your watan, uh, your country, that's where your soul is, that's where you grew up, that's where all your childhood memories and dreams are. However, you need to realize, for those of you that have immigrated, uh, you left that country. You left everything behind. Yes, uh, there's a price to pay. You have, you left your family, you left your friends, you left your, your traditions, you left your culture, you left your, what you're used to, and now you're in somewhere completely different. The price to pay is, you have to assimilate. You have to, you have to get with the times. And in return, you get what you, what you went out to seek. You get the education. You get the prosperity. 
you get the job they wanted to seek, you get the better life for your family. And one thing I noticed online is a lot of people kept mentioning is the freedom. People immigrate from the Middle East for the freedom. The freedom that they could not have while in their countries, you know, in any of the Middle Eastern countries. Now, the dilemma that I'm facing right now is, and it's happening right now in Europe, primarily in Europe, where there's a huge influx right now of Arabs that have migrated into Europe, and now they're trying to change Europe, uh, uh, such as UK, Germany, France, Sweden. They're trying to change those countries to match the countries that they once left. Why do that? If you're so in touch, if you're so longing to go back to your country, why not just pack your stuff and leave? Uh, yes, you might say, well, there's not as many opportunities if I go back. I'm going to go back to live in poverty. I'm going to go back to be a nobody. Well, you know what? If you, keep up do if you keep on doing what you're doing right now, you're going to change the exact country that you're in right now and make it to where your children and great-grandchildren and grandchildren are going to live in the same property and not have the same... Uh, <clears throat> the same opportunities as you once sought. When you teach your children um, about your culture, that's fine, that's great, that's wonderful. However, don't indoctrinate them to the point to where, oh, yes, we are living in the West, but only to benefit out of it. However, this is the actual culture you need to stick to. And because, come on, keep in mind, you left that culture. You left it for whatever personal reasons, for personal gains, and you decided to not go back. So why try to change the new world that you're living in? We came to the West in order to seek freedom, prosperity, and any of the other things I've already listed. We wanted to get away from the Sharia laws. We wanted to get away from all these rules that held us back. We wanted to go somewhere with democracy. And now, the Arabs are going to the West. They're using that same democracy against the countries in which they live to, to revert those countries into the Middle Eastern countries which are already way reverted back to the 7th century and beyond. I mean, I mean what's next? Fine. You say that Europe in about 20-30 years will become Arabia. Wonderful. Now what? Then you're gonna move to, I don't know, Antarctica and do the same thing? I mean come on, how much of the world do you want to destroy? The Middle East is plagued right now with with unemployment, with with poverty, with with crimes, and a lot of people say there, there's no criminal activity in the Middle East. Bull fucking shit. Yes, there is. Come on, we all know what we're guilty of. So quit trying to act like, you know, we've come from these wonderful countries. And, and I mean, yes, I love my country. It, it's a great place, but it's a wonderful place to visit. Um, every time I go back, I realize why we left in the first place. So if, you move, if you've moved to the West, and I know you have, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this because most Arab countries, YouTube is banned right now. So, so being that you're in the West, accept it. Assimilate into it. I'm not saying completely give up your values, your morals, your ethics. There is a happy median. If you, if you think that living in the West means that you have to become a prostitute and sell yourself, which is not the case, but if you believe that, then don't do it. You can still be immodest, God-fearing, God-loving, uh, Muhammad-worshipping, whatever the hell you want to be person. Uh, just don't try to change the country that you sought shelter in into what you ran away from. That's all I have to say for tonight. You have a wonderful evening, and see you soon.